Okay, everybody saw the title, so I won't beat around the bush. In January of 2022, Ubisoft released an interview on the, I think, financial Australian website called Finder. This interview was about NFTs, and the subject matter was aimed at their most recent initiative called Quartz, where NFT digits were being sold in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I've covered this topic before because that initiative was an absolute failure. There was minimal transaction volume for the collection, items were barred behind multi-hundred hour time gates, because this isn't about providing value, it's about extracting value, which is a completely different thing, and the community reception for this project was at or below rock bottom, but somehow, some way, Ubisoft isn't getting the message. I'm going to read paragraphs from this Q&A and then respond to them. This video isn't going to have the same sort of analytical investigation content I've been focusing on lately. It's more just a response to this particular executive because Ubisoft is rapidly becoming the spearhead of a movement that will genuinely harm the gaming industry. The intersection of crypto, NFTs, and gaming appears to be inevitable at this point. YouTube's head of gaming, Ryan Watt, just left the company to work for Polygon, not the news outlet, the crypto company. Peter Molyneux, known for his work on the Fable franchise, is now working on a crypto game called Legacy. Sega is even considering their next move with a speculative 10 to 15 billion yen budget. And of course, Ubisoft, as well as EA, are making moves to incorporate NFTs into their flagship titles. Major companies and industry figures, primarily executives, by the way, are on board with this buzzword trend, but the players hate them for it. The reception Ubisoft has faced so far is disastrous, and this interview slash Q&A with Finder was meant to address that, I believe, so let's dive in. Nicholas Pord, the executive in this interview, is the vice president of Ubisoft's Innovation Lab. Remember, their Innovation Lab is the department currently working full-scale on NFT integrations. They have partnerships with multiple different companies in the play-to-earn space, and I know I said that this wouldn't contain the same sort of analytical stuff when compared to my normal content, but I guess this part's necessary for context. Ubisoft recently backed Animoca Brands in a $65 million capital raise. Animoca Brands is a crypto slash NFT startup with a wide range of existing projects, many of which pertain to NFT or crypto driven play to earn economies. They are horrible ecosystems, by the way. If you want an example, think of the dumbest little flash games you've ever seen in your life with maximized advertising like mandatory pop up full screen ads and a ridiculous amount of spam accounts bot accounts, and fake profiles to enter daily or weekly giveaways. Basically, the intended play-to-earn economies that exist under the wing of Ubisoft's new partners are disgusting. And that's not even the only indication of their plans. There is another branch of Ubisoft called the Entrepreneurs Lab, and that one also has multiple partnerships with NFT companies and crypto startups. These are initiatives that aim to increase NFT adoption, find additional integration use cases, and generally speaking, push the technology as far as possible as it pertains to Ubisoft and their future games. They are going full steam ahead on this, and that's the reality we need to remember as we look at this interview. Here we go, finally. Question number one. Gamer feedback, quote, by the way, gamer feedback to the Ubisoft Quartz and Digits launch has been generally negative. What has the feedback told you about the prospects of mainstream NFT success? End quote. Answer by Nicholas Pord, VP of Ubisoft's Innovation Lab. Well, it was a reaction we were expecting. We know it's not an easy concept to grasp, but Quartz is really just a first step that should lead to something bigger, something that will be more easily understood by our players. So yeah, side note, he's already starting down the line with a they just don't understand it type of argument. Great job there, buddy. Continuing, that's the way we think about it and why we will keep experimenting. We will keep releasing features and services around this first initiative. And our belief is that piece by piece, the puzzle will be revealed and understood by our players. We hope they will better understand the value we offer them, end quote. So how do I even really say this eloquently? Fuck you. Contrary to what this guy wants to pretend, players actually do understand the function of NFTs in a major video game, they just don't want them. This is technology, and I, oh god, big air quotes around that because the crypto bros and the NFT fans are always saying, this technology will change, shut up. This is technology that's being used to solve prob solving problems that don't exist in gaming. But let's just keep reading, I'm gonna get too heated. Question number two. You spoke in your presentation about improving the relationship with players. If that is your goal with Quartz, it must be quite frustrating to see the feedback you've received. Answer. It's part of the process, I would say. It's a reaction we are accustomed to. I think it's great. I think it's great because it shows how engaged our players are and how passionate they are about their hobby and gaming in general. And looking at that, I think it's reassuring somehow. It shows that our players love what we do and love Ubisoft's ability to offer good games. So that's cool. 
I don't really know what to say right now. That's almost delusional. The overwhelmingly negative feedback is actually good and proves that we should keep doing it because it somehow shows that people love our games. If you are accustomed to a severely negative reaction, you might be doing something wrong. Just a thought. Also, what little bit of logic this answer might have gets thrown out the window when you realize that if gamers like Ubisoft games, and if they understand that NFTs will hurt those games, but you're going to do it anyway because you think that your community is full of what? Passionate idiots? They're not going to love your games much longer. Continuing his answer, quote, Still, obviously we are a bit frustrated, yes, but I think overall it's okay and it's something we can really understand. We so strongly believe that what we are doing with Quartz and Digits goes in the right direction, so we will keep integrating, obviously listening to what our fans are telling us and how they're telling us as we go, so we can also adapt what we're doing and where we're going. So that's the next move, to make sure what we're doing will make even more sense to gamers, end quote. What? What was that? If everyone is telling you to stop, how do you arrive at listening to what our fans are telling us and how they're telling us, but then also keep going? They are telling you to stop. They aren't saying we love the tech and the functionality and the use cases in the future. They're saying we hate this, every aspect of it. It makes no sense. It's unnecessary and we do not want it to exist in the games. That is not synonymous with make a few tweaks and keep on trucking along there, guy. This dude is honestly special. One more. We don't need all of it because you'll pretty firmly get the point after this one, and it's a lot of repetitive bullshit anyway. Question number three. Well, let's talk about making sense of it. What do you think is the big positive that gamers are missing about what NFTs like Digits can offer them? Answer. Quote. I think gamers don't get what a digital secondary market can bring to them. For now, because of the current situation and context of NFTs, gamers really believe it's first destroying the planet, and second, just a tool for speculation. But what we at Ubisoft are seeing first is the end game. The end game is about giving players the opportunity to resell their items once they're finished with them, or they're finished playing the game itself. Now the best part, really, truly. All right, here we go, quote. So it's really for them. It's really beneficial, but they don't get it for now. Also, this is part of a paradigm shift in gaming. Moving from one economic system to another is not easy to handle. There are a lot of habits you need to go against and a lot of your ingrained mindset you have to shift. It takes time. We know that. End quote. Here's where the mirror just completely shatters. Mask off, no pretense. Gamers don't get it. This is actually beneficial to them. We know better than all of our community, but they don't understand. He talks about the value of resale or secondhand markets and literally says the gamers don't get what a digital secondary market can bring to them. Okay, well, why can't we resell our copy of Assassin's Creed on Uplay? Publishers like Ubisoft go to great lengths to mitigate the existence of a digital secondary market. But now they suddenly want one? Yes, they absolutely want one, but the reason that they want one is actually very different than providing player value. The real reason is because a crypto-focused in-game market or economy allows them to extract significantly more money from their user base. In-game auction houses and peer-to-peer -peer trading is not new. Nothing about that functionality requires NFTs, it's existed for a very long time. Literally nothing needs NFTs, but when you turn your items into a store of value, of literal value, and then allow exchanges to take place between players for purchase and sale, you can harvest transaction fees. Not only is it a brand new flavor of the month way to jack up prices fueled by terminology such as ownership and unique, it's a way to create additional publisher income. Let me explain. CSGO, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, has a massive in-game economy because weapon skins are worth real money. Facilitated by Steam, these weapon skins are responsible for a multi-billion dollar digital economy, and Ubisoft, if they are able to actually pull this off, would be able to create their own version of this, to a degree. The thing is, get this, CSGO has had that economy for years. They didn't need NFTs. No one needs NFTs. NFTs are a completely useless thing in their current form and might offer some value for proof of ownership in particular industries, like in sporting events or even some kind of application in the medical industry or field, but not for gaming. Every time the players buy and sell their NFTs on the marketplace, Ubisoft would get a cut of the revenue. They would be able to pit players against each other with exclusivity to drive prices through the roof. And absolutely none of this requires NFTs at all. It's just the current catalyst behind their push to expand microtransaction revenue. If they cared about creating secondary markets and ownership, they would let you buy and sell the game that you bought. 
If they actually cared about increasing player value, they could easily offer exclusive items and then put price tags on them with peer-to-peer -peer trading and a cash-out option. They don't need NFTs for that, they never have, but they can't actually do it because of existing regulations. Well, crypto doesn't have that kind of regulation, so either A, they create an identical system to what they could have already done, and you don't even get to cash out the value of your NFTs, though they are a store of value and that's kind of the whole point in their current phase, or, or B, they do it to circumvent regulation, you can cash out if you will, they ride this digital economy as far as possible with transaction fees and eventually get regulated into the dirt. Here's the thing. I don't believe that this is a company-wide initiative because I know from a couple of Ubisoft developers that I do still talk to that they don't want this shit in their games. NFTs are not the reason that they got into the field. Let me just put it that way. I recognize that many of the actual creatives at the company are not advocating for this trash, so I wanted to take a moment and clarify the title. Ubisoft as a corporate entity is absolute trash right now. Their executive team, their decision-making process for spearheading new projects, all of it, but their creative departments, they do some great work, and I don't believe that the greedy failures of management should be universally applied to all employees. I'm probably burning a bridge here, to be honest. I've been to the Ubisoft lounge at E3. A bunch of my close friends from the beginning of Upper Echelon have been star players for them, gotten free trips out of it, etc., etc. And I've even gone out to one of their studios to literally help fix one of their games. I understand that I will burn a very real bridge, a very valuable bridge, with this title and this video, if I haven't already, but... I will never support Ubisoft again if they push forward with this endeavor. No one wants this, at least not any legitimate, like, gaming enthusiasts. Maybe the, the idiot crypto bros and the NFT fans that don't even play video games for long enough to unlock any of the exclusive items, maybe they want this, but no one cares what they want. What they want is irrelevant, they shouldn't even have a voice in the discussion. And unless we start to say it with sufficient force and impact, they clearly are not going to get the message. Ubisoft is honestly speedrunning the destruction of their own reputation right now, and I'm not even surprised. It, I just, I can't say I'm surprised. At the very least, put a smarter talking head on stage for the interviews, because at this point you are a complete joke of a company. Gamers don't get it. No, they get it, they just hate it, and all you are going to do is add fuel to the dumpster fire if you keep on going. That's it. Ubisoft is now my personal pick for the worst gaming industry publisher, bar none. Congratulations. If you want to support, there are links down below. I'm trying to move away from YouTube AdSense, so Patreon or Locals if you have any interest. Also, Odyssey, which is a YouTube platform alternative where all my content can be found. Another creator to check out. Merchandise, social media, all of it is linked down below. All that stuff, etc., etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.